Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video I'm going to tell you about an awesome application that I use to keep my life on track. It's called Vicunja and it's a project management tool that you can deploy on your infrastructure and have complete control over who has access to this. It has a ton of useful features where you can set things like the date for a project, you can set the milestones within the project, you've got full user management, you've got 2FA, you've got data export and a whole host more. I'm going to show you how to deploy this within Docker, but you can also add Kubernetes. I'll share my config files, albeit they have a third party Helm chart available. We'll be installing this on Docker in this video, and as always, I'll share my configs on GitHub. We'll have a quick run through all of the configuration, and then we'll see this up in action. So let's head over now and have a look at the configuration files before we deploy this. So having a look through the configuration, the first thing you'll notice is that there are two containers. That's because Vicunja uses an external database in this setup. Now you can choose between a couple I've chosen for MySQL and MariaDB. That seems to work well for me and I've no real reason to change, but do know that you can change it if you want to. So let's have a quick run through. The first container is Vicunja itself and we're using the latest image. We want to set the public URL to whatever your URL is, and you'll see that later on down here in the traffic labels. So this will be something like your internal subdomain for this service. Next, we need to tell it where is this external database. So it's using DB, which happens to be the name of the container for our MariaDB container, and it runs on port 3306. Next, because this is a database, we're going to need to have a password. So this password here, change me obviously, needs to match the password down here, change me. So do change me and change it to something secure. This is of type MySQL, as I mentioned earlier, so we'll leave that be. We want to create a database user. I've just called this Vicunja as the default. It makes sense to me. And we also need to create the actual database itself. And this database is also called Vicunja. Next, we need to create a Java web token secret. So just create a random string and put that in here and that will get used. Then we need to specify a volume. For this case, I've just put it in the dot slash files. So this will create a folder within your compose folder, but you can change this to wherever you want. This is using a bind mount after all. Next, we say that we're gonna put this on the proxy network. That's because we want to be able to access this through our traffic proxy. It depends on the database being healthy, which is quite useful rather than just depending on a container. This actually makes sure that the container is healthy, not only running. Then we get onto the standard traffic labels and there's nothing really here that stands out from anything before. The only thing we need to do is specify that it's running on that load balancer port on port 3456, which is the default for Vicunja. Next, we get onto the database and there's not really too much here that we need to talk about. We're gonna use Maria Database 10. That seems to be the stable version that Vicunja recommend. It has a couple of commands that initially set this container up. So it's gonna set the character set to UTF-8 and it's also gonna set the server collation to UTF-8 Unicode CI. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I think it's to do with sort of the font and the encoding of text that gets submitted into the database. We're gonna create a MySQL root password. So if you wanted to connect to this directly from something like MySQL admin, you'd need to put in the port and the host IP, but you'd also need this password and user here. These all match up to what we previously specified before. That's the user, the password, and the database. And that means with those credentials set, Vicunja can connect to this container. We also put this on the proxy network so that it's on the same network. You could split this up if you wanted to. We also need to specify a volume for this database so it has some persistence. In this case, again, dot slash DB, but you could store this wherever you want as again, this is a bind mount. It's going to restart unless stopped, and it's also got a special health test check. So it's going to be pinging the local host with the username of Vicunja and the password of ChangeMe, and hopefully if it gets a response, i.e. it can successfully log in, respond to that ping, then it should be healthy, up and running, and that's what will get reported back. After that, we're simply specifying the network, and that's proxy, and it's external true because we set this network up previously on my traffic video. So I'm now going to hop into my Docker host, 
copy over this file and get it running. So now I'm connected to my remote host at the top here, that 200.50. I've copied over the Docker Compose file and I'm now gonna hop into the terminal. I'm gonna navigate to this folder and I'm gonna deploy these containers. Once in the correct folder, I'll do the standard sudo docker compose up dash D. The first time you run this, it's gonna go away and pull those containers and hopefully you should be up and running. So now my containers have started. I'm just gonna hop straight into Portainer just to check that everything's working. In Portainer, we should see, yeah, we've got the two containers down here. In the MirrorADB, it says that it's ready for connections, which is good. If it doesn't say that, that you've got an error somewhere, so do go and check that. Going back to Vicunja, the web app, yeah, we can see that that's up and running, all migrations, etc. everything's set up. Great. So now, with any luck, I should be able to hop into my web browser and access the login page. And yeah, there we go. And if you're wondering what Vicunja means, you should have your answer by now. It's a llama. So once you're on the home page, you can obviously log in once you've created your account, but for this time, we're gonna to need to create our account. So give yourself a username, stick in an email address, stick a password, and then hit create account. Once you've done that, you should reach the dashboard. And here you can see I've created just a couple of demos to show you what we can do. So a quick overview. That's conveniently where you end up. You can see that I've got upcoming tasks. So you get an overview here of all the current tasks. Here it's just showing an actual progress bar against these two tasks. So I've got an overall project here for decorating the house. I've created two subtasks for the kitchen and the kids room. And if you click on one of these, you can actually put in different things here. So you can put progress tracker, you can put descriptions of things you want to do, tasks, you can set priorities, you can set different users that can actually see this you can add in attachments so maybe things like receipts or websites or pictures of things that you need to buy for your project and behind my face you can also do things like setting the due date the start date the end date you can even put in handy reminders and all of that good stuff you can add labels to projects to make sure that if it's a decorating project for example or it might be something more related to your work i.e. a specific client or something like that, you could add a label so that you get all of the tasks associated with that client. Next, you can build out teams so you could have multiple users all using Vicunja and you could actually give certain people access to certain projects and you could also add those people to a team and thus add a team to a project to make life easier. If you're wondering what settings you've got in here, well, you can hit on your name, hit settings and there's quite a few things that you can actually customize. So one thing that's important, you might want to enable two-factor authentication. You might also want to be able to import data from elsewhere. And you might also want to export your data so that you have a copy of everything should you need to migrate, or just in the case of having a backup that's outside of something like, I don't know, Restic. It also supports CalDAV, so you could actually use different clients to interact with your data within Vicunja. You need to create some API tokens to do that. And you've also got the nuclear option of deleting your account if needed. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know if this is something that you're going to use and what projects you've got going on at the moment in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.